Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and welcome to our fifth episode on how to write a high school lab report. Today we're taking a look at writing procedures. The first thing, procedures are written in numbered point form. So what does that mean? You'll put step one, so you'll put one dot and then write the first step, two, next step, and so on. It's not written in paragraph form, you're putting them in point form, and they're written as step one, step two, step three, and so on. There needs to be enough detail in those steps that someone else could do the exact same experiment in the exact same way. So you need to include the mass of a substance if used. So don't just say uh, we use sodium chloride. Say we use six grams of sodium chloride or whatever the case was. So make sure that someone else could do the experiment in the exact same way. Avoid redundancy. Some students, when they're trying to add in all that detail, they make their uh, procedures just like 20 pages long when it's unnecessary. So if you're going to repeat some steps, instead of saying, you know, do this, and then you say again, do this, but with this other chemical, do this with this other chemical, you could say something like, repeat steps 4 through 12 with chemicals B, C, and D. So once you've explained it with chemical A, just say to re repeat those steps for each of those other chemicals. That avoids redundancy, keeps your list shorter, it's a lot easier for someone else to follow. The first time that you use an acronym, so acronyms are when it's not a full word but there are several words and you take the first letter of that word, put them together. The first time you write an acronym, you need to write the full term and then in parentheses or in brackets, you write the acronym form and then from then on you can use the acronym. This is also true for chemical compounds. So the first time you need to write the proper terminology in words and you can write the formula in brackets. From then on you can use that formula. Uh, speaking of chemicals, we need to use proper IUPAC terminology. I know everyone loves their nomenclature. This is a great time to practice. Uh, you need to use digits when the number is in the middle of a sentence or if it's at the very beginning of the sentence, you use words. So if there were six grams of sodium chloride and you're saying somewhere in the middle of the sentence you mentioned those six grams, you would write six as a digit. But if the very start of the sentence was six grams of sodium chloride, da 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 da, then you would write S I X instead of writing it as a digit. Lab procedures need to be in past tense. You already did them. You're writing the lab report now. You already did them. It's written in the past tense. It's also written in the passive voice. This is something a lot of students struggle with, but you cannot use personal pronouns. Things like I, us, we, anything like that. Those are personal pronouns. We cannot use them. So we need to use the passive voice, which is something your English teachers will hate, but we need to use the passive voice to avoid using those personal pronouns. So instead of saying, for our first experiment, we measured one gram of sodium chloride. We've got our and we've got we. Neither of those are acceptable. Instead, you could write one gram of sodium chloride was measured for the first experiment. And you notice uh, in the first example, one gram was written in the middle of the sentence, so it was a digit. In the second one, it was written at the beginning of the sentence, so it was written as words. All right, so that's all for now. Bye-bye.